Hi everyone, hello, how are you doing? I hope everyone is doing good. So welcome to another video of uh, respiration and circulation. So we have just begun with the chapter. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about the upper respiratory uh, system. Now in this video, we will be talking about the lower respiratory system. Uh, basically the lower respiratory tract, sorry, not the system, but lower respiratory tract, uh, which is made up of uh, larynx, tracheac, bronchial tree, and lungs. Okay, so let's begin with the first part that is the larynx. So after the pharynx, which is generally the food pipe, uh, you have the larynx, which is your, uh, not the food pipe, pharynx, you can say the food passage, okay, the passage through which the food enters into the esophagus, which is the food pipe, okay? And then you have the larynx, which is uh, starting from the pharynx, a little bit uh, below from the pharynx, and then, uh, it extends into this trachea, okay, uh, which this trachea then enters into the bronchus and then lungs. So larynx is basically the place where the sound or the voice is produced, made up of cartilage tissue and uh, yeah, so the uh, helps in sound production. Yes, uh, this uh, larynx is basically uh, your enlargement of the nasal uh, cavity. So you have the nasal cavity and then it uh, extends into the larynx okay it is above the trachea and below the pharynx it is above the trachea and below the pharynx basically uh, it is the in between region of the pharynx and the trachea okay uh, and it is made up of cartilage and muscles which is bound by which type of connective tissue elastic type of connective tissue so for production of sound for when you're speaking okay so the voice the sound that is coming that is because of the coordination of all these uh, three uh, uh, parts, that is the muscle, the cartilage, and the elastic tissue, okay? Uh, also, one of the important uh, part which is present near the larynx is your uh, glottis, okay? Uh, which is uh, guided by the opening and closing of the epiglottis, okay? So, because it is a sound box and the voice box, so it will have only air which will come and uh, come in and go out, will uh, enter and exit the sound box for production of the sound. Uh, so, uh, it is located near the pharynx. Yes. So, as and when the food is entering uh, the mouth, when you take the food and it is passing through the pharynx and entering into the esophagus, so uh, there is also larynx. So. By chance, the larynx, uh, the food does not enter into the larynx. So that is prevented by this epiglottis, which closes the larynx. Okay. Sorry, glottis, which closes the, uh, yeah, epiglottis, which closes the larynx. That is the opening is known as the glottis, covered by epiglottis. This will help in, in prevention of the entry of food into the larynx. Okay. This, this flap is made up of a thin elastic cartilages flap. So when you're swallowing, you can feel uh, when you swallow uh, one side, there is, uh, you have to, you know, as, uh, a type of clothes you will feel at the, uh, somewhere you the top and then one side opens up, like, you know, uh, like that. So that is, that is the action of the epiglottis, covering the glottis, preventing the entry of food into the larynx. Moving to the next part, that is the trachea. Okay, trachea is known as the windpipe. It's a cylindrical windpipe. You can see in the diagram over here. Okay, this is your windpipe. Yeah, this was, larynx was over here. And then the trachea, and then further it branches out into bronchi. Okay, it branches out into bronchi. Uh, the dimensions are given over here. It's a flexible cylindrical tube, again made up of cutting. Uh, ring uh, type of cartilage tissue okay it extends uh, downward it, 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 it is coming downward enters into the thoracic cavity that is the uh, chest region where the lungs are there and splits into the bronchioles two main bronchioles as you can see in the diagram over here the left and right okay bronchi primary bronchi and then this primary bronchi further branches out into secondary and then that further branches out into tertiary Okay, supported by C-shaped rings, again, and this trachea is lined by pseudostratified columnar epithelium, which is ciliated. 
again, which is what ciliated by having the cilia uh, present in, inside the uh, trachea. So the epithelial type of cells will have cilia for um, passage of the air that is coming from the uh, nose, followed by larynx and followed by the trachea, which will then enter into the bronchus. Okay. Now moving to the next part, the bronchial tree. Okay, so that this this bronchus, as you can see, the trachea branching on into primary bronchus, and then further they are branching on into secondary, and then further they are splitting up into more fine uh, structures, the tertiary structures. So this is basically branched airways leading from the trachea uh, till the uh, air sacs which are present at the ends. So you have the air sacs which are located at the terminal. Till there, they will extend. Okay. Uh, so they, they can be, you can see the flow, uh, the right and the left, the successive divisions of the branches from alveoli, from the trachea to the alveoli can be, uh, you know, written like this. So first, the trachea splits into right and left primary bronchi. Bronchi stands for plural, bronchus stands for singular. Okay. Singular uh, word, a singular noun. When you talk about one bronchi, you know, one tube, the bronchus. When we talk about more than one, so it will be bronchi. Okay. Uh, then this uh, primary splits into secondary or lobar bronchi, you can say. Then this secondary further splits into tertiary or segmental bronchi. This further splits into more minor uh, intralobular bronchioles. Now bronchi splits into bronchiole. So let's say if the bronchi is this big, uh, so they will further split into smaller tubings, which will be bronchioles. Then further, this intralobular splits into, gets divided into more branches uh, known as terminal bronchioles. Then respiratory bronchioles. And then finally, you have the alveolar ducts, okay, uh, which gives rise to the alveolar sacs. And uh, these are the sacs into which the alveoli are there, which are the actual uh, which where the where the actual uh, gas exchange that is exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen will take place. Okay, so this is all about the bronchus, which will further lead to lungs. Uh, we will see uh, more details of alveoli over here. Okay, uh, the air sacs, as you can see over here, you have the intralobular bronchiole over here. Okay, you have the blood supply, the red and the blue one, blood flow over here, which are surrounding these uh, structures. Okay, one if, if there is one sac, you call it as alveolus. When it is more than one, you call it alveoli. Uh, from inside, it looks like this. It's like a grape, a uh, bunch of grapes. Okay, when you cut from inside, it's a hollow, uh, uh, sorry, uh, hollow tube, uh, hollow uh, air space over here. So this is the alveoli duct. Hello, yeah. This is the alveoli duct, and this is the alveoli sac, and this is the actual alveoli. Okay, and here the exchange of gases will take place. So alveoli and their uh, ducts. Sorry, this is the CPS ducts form respiratory or exchange part of the respiratory system. So here is a place where the actual exchange of blasts will take place. So we call the alveoli as a structural and functional unit of the lungs. Okay, so the lungs, as uh, in, in general understanding, we say lungs are the actual uh, part of the respiratory system which helps in breathing, but lungs are having alveoli which will do the main uh, exchange of gases. Approximately, you have 150 million sacs for gas exchange in your lungs. Okay, it has different types of cells, three types basically. The first type is the squamous alveolar cells. This allows rapid gas exchange. The second type is the great alveolar cells. Basically, it helps in wear and tear of the alveolar sacs because they are in constant uh, use for exchange of the gas. Uh, also, they uh, secrete surfactant. So, their should surfactant is basically... Uh, just like, you know, uh, when you take any washing soda and you do, uh, take it and uh, dissolve it in water, there is a slippery, slimy uh, thing, the, the solution that uh, is formed. So that is surfactant for easy exchange of gas and uh, you know, uh, that, that fluid should be there for the functioning of these algae. 
okay and then finally you have the alveolar macrophages so you have the alveoli which some of the alveoli will function as uh, which are made up of squamous they will be squamous alveolar cells their only function is to exchange gas then great alveolar cells their only fu their function is to basically repair the wear and tear of the alveolar epithelium and secrete surfactant for their proper functioning and then you have the third type of the alveolar sac that is the alveolar macrophages these are also known as the dust cells basically these are your cells which will help in immunizing the lungs they are, they will act as immune cells they are they are phagocytic in nature they will try to trap dust particles bacteria or any infected uh, you know microorganisms that uh, that might cause infection of the cause infection of the respiratory tract so for that they are there so alveolar macrophages they will carry out uh, functions of the immunity they will try to check for any bacteria any debris any dust particle and they will try to heat it up phagocytosis okay so this is about the alveolar moving to the lung uh, so as you can see in the diagram you you have two lungs uh, right and left one is bigger and the other one is a bit uh, shorter so they are located in the uh, thoracic chamber so you have the diaphragm above the diaphragm is your thoracic cavity the chest region and below the diaphragm is your abdominal cavity okay so your lungs are located in the thoracic chamber which rests on the diaphragm the diaphragm is somewhere over here okay below the lungs uh, the right lung as you can see over here it has three parts or three lobes the upper superior lobe the middle lobe and the down downward lobe that is the inferior lobe and the left lung you can see it is made up of only two parts one and two okay and all a uh, both of the lung is covered by a layer a double layered membrane or we also call it as a double layer pleura so you have the lungs and then you have a two layer covering onto it so outer covering parietal pleura inner covering visceral pleura okay time and again we are coming across this uh, outer parietal layer and inner visceral layer in 11th also we have discussed this in detail okay in heart also we will be coming across so outside in outer membrane parietal layer inner membrane visceral layer okay so we do not apply this uh, term to all uh, the parts that we are discussing but uh, specifically to lungs to heart okay outer parietal layer and inner visceral layer and uh, this double layered fluid and the lungs uh, so this is the uh, double layered pleura and the lungs in between then you have the fluid okay to avoid friction basically to lubricate the surface of the lung so this pleural fluid which is present in between these two layers also it helps in lubricating the surface of the lungs it is creating a moisture a fluid with a fluid environment which will prevent the friction between the membranes Okay, so it serves this purpose. So that's all for this video. We have discussed the larynx, the trachea, the bronchial tree, okay, and the lungs, or the alveoli, and the lungs. So these all five parts together is your lower respiratory system. So that's all for this video. In the next video, we will be covering uh, the mechanism of breathing, that is inhalation, inspiration, and exhalation of air, expiration. So that's all. Thank you uh, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.